Hello, pen friends. Welcome to another episode of Currently Inked. I'm Matt Armstrong, your host. Glad to have you back for this episode, this review. So we, today in the review, we're going to be taking a look at another pen from the manufacturer Zizo. Now, I've done a couple of reviews of Zizo pens before, spelled X-E-Z-O. If you want to know more about the company, you can go and check out those reviews um, and, uh, and you can learn a little bit about them. Short version is they're a U.S.-based company that does uh, luxury goods, so watches, leather goods, and pens. And most of their pens are limited editions in numbered in 500. They, uh, they're, I believe, based in Texas, if memory serves properly. And today, we're going to be looking at a pen they sent me for review and giveaway purposes, the Eternal Flame. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the pen comes in this little cardboard sleeve, and then inside you've got what is kind of their trademark box. So it's this kind of faux snakeskin box, and it opens right in the middle instead of, you know, kind of folding up like a, a, one of these boxes normally would. But it opens in the middle. Inside it comes with a polishing cloth, the uh, guarantee card, a little pamphlet on the pen itself, some ink cartridges, short standard international ink cartridges, and then we come to the pen itself. Kind of nice packaging, very different than most of the packaging I see out there. If So if you're one of those packaging people, that's something to keep in mind. Um, remove the cellophane from the pen, and this is the Eternal Flame. And if you look at it, you can pretty much get a, a solid idea of where this pen comes from, where it gets its name from. So this is a metal-bodied pen with this beautiful red-orange lacquer. It's got kind of darker uh, black and darker red in here. It looks a lot like flame, frankly, or staring into the coals of a, a long-burning bonfire or something like that. So it is very red. It's very red. So if you like red and there, I don't see a lot of red pens. This is a red pen. And um, I actually find it really attractive. It's, the lacquer is, appears to be very, very high quality, very thick, very hard. It's quite, quite attractive. I, I like that, the lacquer finish on this quite a bit. So kind of starting at the top of the pen, the cap is cut out and this clip is hinged in. So it, it swoops all the way across the top of the pen and down the sides and ends in this double wheel at the bottom. And then the cap is sectioned into four sections separated by gold washers in between each section. Gives it some visual interest that it might otherwise be missing. Uh, I, I know some people aren't a real big fan of gold hardware, but I feel like on this particular pen, gold was absolute, gold colored hardware was absolutely the right choice. It, it matches the, the lacquer very nicely. It's a good combination. I'm going to unscrew the cap for just a second here because this looks like the cap band, but it's actually not. <laughs> the cap is only, the cap only has a little band, almost like a washer there. The, the band that you're seeing when the cap is closed is on the, actually on the barrel. And it's a flush design, so there's no step down between the cap and the barrel. Some people really like that design. The band here says Zizo Eternal Flame, 18 karat gold plated, and then the limited edition number, which is number 264, and I believe that's 264 out of 500. The barrel is almost completely that same red lacquer, tapers down very nicely to kind of a rounded point of a nice gold plated finial, nice big finial. So this is not a, re a shrinking violet of a pen by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's a nice shape. I like the shape a lot. It, I, like I said, I really do enjoy the lacquer on this one. It's, it's very different than anything I've ever seen. The cap comes off on very, very smooth threads. It's one, two, three, and a quarter turns to get the cap off, which is a fair bit. That's uh, more, more turns than I normally like on a pen. The, and underneath, well, before we get to the underneath, the inside of the cap is lined with uh, a black plastic liner, which helps make these threads so super smooth. Under the cap, you have a, a, a tapering section. It's a little on the narrow side, so if you've got a more slender grip, you could this would be one that might be a little more comfortable for you. The section is lacquered as well, and that's something I have not seen. I, as far as I can tell, I've not seen on any pen. Uh, it it does kind of tie everything together, so I think I like I think I like it. 
with a little caveat we'll get to when we get to the writing sample. I've got a small concave flange here on the end of the section, and then we come to the nib, which we'll get back to in just a second. This is a cartridge converter pen. It is, a, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a metal-bodied pen, so it's a little on the heavy side. It's going to be heavier than most acrylic pens. It's, it's actually, it's kind of just on the heavy side in general, not even compared to other pens. It's, it's a pretty heavy pen. It's got a metal flange and metal interior, so you probably are not going to want to try to, to use this as an eyedropper. Comes with a Zizo branded converter. It looks like a Schmidt style converter here. Or it can take long or short international standard cartridges. And then we come to the nib. Now, the nib is a number five sized nib. It has the Iridium Point Germany stamped on the nib face with the little Zizo logo and a plastic feed on the back. For, for some reason, when Zizo had these made, they only got them with fine nibs, so you can only get this with a fine nib. That is one, I think, kind of downside to this pen, that if you're not someone who likes fine nibs, your only choice, and you want this pen, your only choice is to get this pen and then pay for a different nib. Um, and that's that's something that I, I don't particularly care for. I, I wish they would have made more nib options available. All right, before we go on to the writing really quickly, the pen can be posted. It does tend to be a little back heavy when it is posted because the cap is, it's pretty, the cap is pretty weighty. Unposted, it fits really nicely in the hand. I find it nice and balanced. It doesn't feel too heavy to me when it is uh, unposted, but it does feel awfully heavy when it is posted. And I think part of that is having the balance a little out of whack when, when it's posted in my hands. Okay, well, I think that is going to do it for the design overview. Let me give you some measurements, then I'll show you how this thing writes. So before I dive into the actual writing itself, a couple things I wanted to point out. One is the section that I mentioned earlier. So as you can see here, it does taper down and it is lacquered. Now, 
This lacquer is hand applied, so no two pens are exactly the same, and it's polished beautifully. But that polish, even though it looks amazing on the section, and I've not seen this on other pens, and I like the way it looks, doesn't always work for my grip. Because the section is tapered, and it's really slippery, and I tend to have slightly sweaty hands, I tend to find myself death gripping the pen. So it's, it's kind of a perfect storm of things that make it not work right for me. So it's, it's a little too narrow, it's very slippery, I have sweaty hands, and it tapers. So I find my grip sliding down toward the nib more and more as I go, and I have to kind of death grip to keep it from doing that. If this were my pen, I would probably take some light grit sandpaper and rough it up a little bit so I could get a better grip on the pen. That's, I think, I like everything else about the pen. That's the one thing about the pen I don't like is this grip. It just does not work for the way I write. Might work for you, just doesn't work for me. Anyway, diving into the, the writing. So, this is uh, very fine for a Western fine nib. It really is a, a fine nib. So if you're expecting to have kind of a wet, juicy, fine nib, I think you will be disappointed. It's smooth, but not overly so. It's got a decent bit of feedback. I'd say maybe a three on my feedback scale. So it doesn't just float across the paper necessarily. You know, it's got a little bit of tooth, so you know it's there but not so much that it is even remotely unpleasant. The ink flow is, is quite consistent. It does have just a little bit of an issue with not starting right up if you let it sit for a long time. So this pen had been sitting for about three weeks without being used uh, before I sat down to record this review and it took a little bit to get the ink going. It was also seated nib up in my pen stand. Now, I, I mention this often, but I do that for every pen I review. I usually write with it for a week or two, then I let it sit for a week or two before I record the review because I want to see how well does it, is it ready to just go. This pen did have a little bit of an issue a couple of times with starting. Once it got going, it wrote beautifully. No ink starvation, no hard starts, no skipping, none of that stuff. It was just, this is a pen that doesn't necessarily like to, to be left alone for you know more than a couple of days. It is not the wettest pen in the world, but it's also not the driest. It's really nice. It's on the very slightly dry side of moderate, but it is it's still really nice, and this is a pen that would work quite nicely on less than quality paper. So if you're in an environment where you're forced to use really poor quality paper, the fineness of the nib combined with the way it has been adjusted, this would be a really good pen for situations like that. Reverse writing, it works pretty well. I don't see a huge difference. There is a little bit of a difference, but not a huge difference between writing the regular way and writing reverse ways. But it performs really quite nicely reverse ways. It's one of the better ones I've used in quite a while for reverse writing. It's, it's a little more toothy on the reverse side, but not too much. So all in all, I've you know, I, I like the way the nib writes. I just don't like the, quite like the way that the pen sits in my hand. I think this is a pen for someone who maybe prefers a slightly narrower grip combined with a pen with a little more heft. So if you don't like a super lightweight pen and you like a pen, but you like a narrower grip, this is a really good combination of those two, which is something you don't see a lot of in the fountain pen industry. Usually heavier pens are also bigger pens. And this is a nice kind of middleweight pen sitting at, oh, what am I looking at here? Around 30 grams, 32 grams, uncapped or unposted. But it's still got a fairly narrow grip at just, uh, just about 10 and a half millimeters. So, there, it, you know, it's been a really consistent writer for me, and I cannot complain about the way it writes. It's just not quite the right fit for my hand. The Zizo Eternal Flame, as mentioned earlier, is one of those limited edition pens that Zizo puts out. So there were only 500 of them made. The one they sent me was number 264, I believe. Yep, 264. Uh, so they're not always going to be around. If it's something you like, I'd say I would suggest you jump on it because it's not going to be around for too long. Now, the pen goes for, I'm just taking a look at my notes over here, $186 is the list price. 
$186 is, I believe, a little much for this pen at that price point, but if the design is a fit for you, I still think you would be happy with it. Uh, you know, if, if that price point works for you, I think you would be happy with this pen uh, if you like the design. At a lower price point, the, the construction quality is really, really high. The nib writes beautifully. It's, it's a unique design, not something you're going to find really from anyone else. I don't know of any pens that are quite like this one. This one is, is pretty unique. And, you know, it being red and gold and all might make a really nice Valentine's Day present. So that has been my review of the Zizo Eternal Flame. Thank you to Zizo for providing this for review purposes. It was provided free of charge, but um, for the review and then a later giveaway, that giveaway will be coming up shortly. So keep an eye out for that. We'll probably start the giveaway, I'm guessing, speaking of Valentine's Day, right around then. And, uh, and so if, if this is a pen you're interested in, check out zizo.com. You can find the link to Zizo at the written review on penhabit.com. Don't forget to check out that review for extra photos and the like. If you want to submit a quote, the link to that is in the video description down below on how you can submit a quote. And I haven't, I haven't done my shameless self-promotion in a while, so uh, don't forget to head over to penhabit.com slash shop to check out the Inky Fingers notebook line. I've got lined, blank, and currently inked logs in both traveler's notebook and pocket notebook sizes, including some factory seconds at a reduced price. So if you wanted to get them for a little cheaper, you can get them there. And uh, if you don't watch my currently inked videos, the kind of the vodcast videos that I do every couple of weeks, don't forget to check out the next one. I'm going to have some exciting news coming about those as well. I will also hopefully in the next week or two be putting up some of the pens from my personal collection for sale. I've been meaning to get to that. I just haven't had the time. So there should be some new pens going up for sale there as well. So again, thank you to Zizo for providing this for review and giveaway. Thank you to you for watching and for your support via Patreon or PayPal or the donations that you send. I really do appreciate it. And we will see you here soon, hopefully not too far in the future, on another video here on The Pen Habit. Thanks for watching. Bye.